Hi, welcome to episode five. Today is part four of our five-part series, Searching for Off-Grid Property. Uh, today's video is gonna be on Arkansas and Texas. Yeah, we drove down to Arkansas via through Eastern Colorado and through Kansas and then down through Oklahoma because we wanted to check out all those places too. We went in through the northwestern corner of Arkansas and we were up in the in the mountainous area just below. It's still considered the Ozarks, but it is Arkansas Ozarks. Very warm. We went in the summertime. It wasn't humid yeah. sweltering yeah it wasn't sweltering or anything like that it was very tolerable yeah lots of trees lots of water very very lush and lots of bugs <laughs> so yeah we enjoyed our time in arkansas it was totally different than the climate we have here in denver except for the heat it's just a different kind of heat with the humidity. So some of the things that we're considering on this search is what type of natural disasters they have in these different states. And in Arkansas, there's actually quite a few that I didn't know about. So I knew about flooding and flash floods. That's definitely a problem there, but they also do get tornadoes and I didn't realize that. So that's kind of a big deal that tornadoes are kind of one of the things that we don't want to have to deal with. So tornadoes happen. They do also get hurricanes, wildfires, and landslides. Yeah, the grow zone there is between six and eight, depending where you're at in the state. The northern part is six, so they do get winters there, uh, freezes and snow. And the southern part is more arid, I found. It seemed more drier, like it was blowing out from Texas or so. But down there, you can grow more variety of stuff obviously. All right, so the grow zone in Arkansas, like I was saying, it's more arid down south. So I believe you can grow your citrus and unusual exotic plants down there. However, it was drier. You can tell the trees are more like pine and it just seems more drier. The grass is dry and everything, but the northern part's very lush, but it's only six for a grow zone. So that's what we're at right here in Colorado. So. Uh, like I said, there's no profit in moving from a grow zone six to a six, but if we considered the southern part of Arkansas, we didn't really explore much down there, but we just kind of drove through it. But you could grow your more exotics down there. So that would be more interesting to me, but it's also lower land. So the advantages of being in northern Arkansas is the height, you know, you're up in elevation more. I think the the proximity to our current address is definitely going to be a factor here because it's a actually pretty long drive. It's a good 15 plus hour drive and that's just to the western part of the state. And as we mentioned in another video, we live really close to Denver, Colorado. So we're trying to get into some property that we can easily get to within like 10 hours. We don't really we don't really want to go further than that unless it's like an unbelievable deal and perfect condition. So the proximity to our current address probably wouldn't work for us unless we did make the leap and went ahead and quit our jobs and made the move over there. So that's definitely something to consider. And the drive out there isn't even scenic, you know, it's uh, <laughs> everything's pretty much the same until you hit, get out of our uh, Oklahoma. And then once you get into Arkansas, it's like, ah, oh, beautiful out mm -hmm. here. But yeah, I can see why people move out there. Mm -hmm. Of course, your resources out there are plenty. You have lots of water. I bet you could easily buy property that has a creek in it or even riverside or even a lakeside because the yeah. water is so abundant. Mm -hmm. Trees are very abundant there. I could see you going to Harbor Freight, buying a mill and milling out your own trees because it's very dense up there. You could build a house out of all that wood for virtually free for the cost of a mill, you know? So that's very in intriguing to me too also. That's being a off wanna, wanna be off-gridder at the moment. That would be something, natural resources such as wood, 
And we also notice a lot of stone out there, so mm -hmm. you could even get by building a stone house if you mm -hmm. wanted. And of course, to. you know, there's sun. It's not as sunny here as it is here in Colorado, but they definitely get sun and they get warm, so that's that's nice. And they've also got a lot of game, so there's lots of fishing. There's lots of really beautiful rivers that are pretty untouched and pretty unpolluted, which is is appealing to us and you know nice clear lakes and and things like that and uh, there is a lot of there's quite a bit of game available out there as well yeah the clearest water i've ever seen besides like lake george in new york is in arkansas that water looked like emeralds you know and you could actually see the fish all the way on the other side of the bank so next up on the evaluation is political affiliation and arkansas is pretty strongly republican state and Doug and I just want to clarify something too. When we talk about Republican or Democrat, and you know, of course, that's going to depend on what's going on in the world and what's going on in our country. We actually are both registered independents. We vote how our conscience guides us at the time. And right now, we're definitely leaning more towards states that have a Republican affiliation. So that would be a bonus for us. As far as the cost of living and taxes and just the general affordability of Arkansas, it's actually a very affordable state to live in. It's relatively tax friendly because Social Security income is completely tax exempt, which is not the case in many other states here in the U.S. You know, you work your whole life paying into Social Security and then you get to retire, but then you pay tax on it again when you retire and you start drawing on that. And in Arkansas, they're not gonna t double tax you basically on your social security. And I am not an accountant, so mm. don't take that as <laughs> sage advice. I just, we just have done a little research and that's what we had seen. When so, we were looking at property out there, it seemed like the average was about $5,000 for an acre, which isn't too bad. It's yeah, reasonable. It's definitely reasonable. A lot more reasonable than Colorado for sure, or mm. Idaho both those places are very expensive one thing to be aware of in arkansas is it does have some of the highest sales tax in the country so that's something you'll want to think about if you're going to be purchasing a lot of goods that's something to consider it's ranked number 14 in affordability and that would be number one is going to be the cheapest place to live in the country number 50 is going to be the most expensive so arkansas coming in at 14 is a pretty good affordability it's pretty close to down there near one so that's definitely a bonus that you'll want to consider well i guess we this we can go into texas now mm -hmm. i've visited texas quite a bit Just one thing i want to mention that is a factor for me in evaluating texas is i do actually have several friends and family members that live in texas my mom spent a good portion of her childhood in texas and then my two two of my very closest friends live in Texas as well. So for me, Texas might be a good option, but we'll, we're gonna see. So the part of Texas that we're evaluating is East Texas. And the reason we're looking at East Texas is because it's really beautiful and it's more lush than what you might typically picture Texas as. Most people t picture Texas as pretty dry and, and flat and East Texas is a lot more green. So that's a big, um, definitely a big bonus. So. Texas does get natural disasters. Of course, they get really hot and they get really high humidity. So that's something to consider. And Texas is gonna be on par with humidity with Florida. So hot and humid, it can have wildfires. They can also get floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, and of course, drought. So that's quite a few natural disasters for one place, but definitely something to consider. And I'm not very familiar with Texas. Carrie went down there by herself to look for property and stuff, but I've driven through the panhandle of Texas and all I can remember is the grass, the cows, <laughs> and the high speed limits on old country roads. So like 85 listed on a road that's only two lanes. So you got a car coming at you at, or an 18 wheeler coming mm -hmm. at you doing 80 and you're doing 80. So I just remember the high speeds there and some of the cactus. Texas actually can be a good place to grow, especially in East Texas. Grow zone eight, you're opening up to citrus and stone fruit and your cactus, probably a lot of edible types of cactuses. Yeah, growing's gonna be a lot more, you're gonna have a lot longer seasons to grow in. 
probably around 200 to 220 days of growing season as opposed to Colorado's 150. And I believe the weather is a little more predictable down there than up here. But uh, Western Texas, forget it. I don't think that they can grow anything or you would see farms out there. All I saw was ranches and I believe that's because the only thing they can grow is grass, even though they do have a warmer climate. Yeah, pretty sparse out there in West Texas. Although property out in West Texas is incredibly cheap, so that's also another factor. West Texas, if we if we were to go to East Texas, it's also going to be another 15 plus hour drive, similar to Arkansas. So that's another consideration. We we can touch the state of Texas probably in about 10 hours, but or maybe even nine. But getting to the part of Texas because it's a big state, so getting to the part of Texas where we would want to be is going to be a good solid 15 plus hours. Well, in Texas, they got lots of sunshine. Eastern Texas has lots of timber. They have water sources. So this means you can fish, you can hunt, you can you can farm on your off-grid property in Eastern Texas. We all know Texas is a pretty Republican leaning state, although there has been some changes lately where parts of Texas, particularly from the South, are leaning a little bit more Democrat. So that's something to keep in mind. Texas is kind of its own, people from Texas kind of consider their state as their own country. And in many ways that's true. There's a lot of things about Texas that we that we really do like. So that's important for us again, is the, that political and what's going on with that. As far as affordability, most people think of Texas as very affordable and it actually used to be, but they are getting a, a lot of the same influx of people from the coast that came to Idaho and come here to Colorado are also going to Texas, uh, especially down in the southern part of Texas. There's been a lot of growth and there's been quite a bit of change as far as prices of houses and prices of property and things like that. Definitely still affordable in many of the rural parts. You can still get a great deal on a house and a great price on land, but it's definitely starting to change. The other thing that you're gonna to wanna to be aware of about Texas is that it is a tax-friendly state with no income tax, which is fantastic. But something that you'll wanna be aware of is that Texas has some of the highest property taxes in the country. It's a trade-off. There's things that you get for that. They're known for better schools and better infrastructure and things like that. But you need to be aware because it is significantly higher than other parts in the country. It actually ranked uh, 15 as far as affordability. And the data that I found on that was from about three years ago. So I have a feeling that's probably changed a little bit. But it was ranked as number 15 with one being the least expensive state to live in and 50 being the most expensive state to live in and that's just something that you'll want to keep in mind as far as the less expensive parts of the country so you're going to pay about a third more than the national average on your property taxes so you know take a look at that don't miss that when you're looking at property or looking at a house that's really important yeah so thanks for watching today's video we hope you subscribe and stick around for our next additions to this video series we are going to be doing our fifth video mm -hmm. and that is going to be on the prop the place that we decided the state that we decided to purchase land in and i'm kind of excited about this next video <laughs> uh, we're going to reveal to you which property that we landed on and we're going to go into more details about why we chose this place as opposed to the other places yeah definitely so make sure and follow along if you're an off-gridder or if you're considering going off-grid or even if you're just considering buying and developing property or raw land we think you'll learn a ton from our channel we appreciate the likes and comments and we'll see you soon